Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD, and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Lucas on Blue White Stone Blade versus Mark on Goblins. Uh, Mark's actually been borrowing this list to put up some great results. As you see, that legacy open playmat in front of him uh, was earned on uh, April 13th, I believe, <laughs> 2019. If I'm reading that correctly. Uh, he is a ELD Legacy Open champion with a spot on the wall of legends for cutting through a very difficult field with this very goblins list uh, goblins has picked up some new cards for modern horizons so we'll see how those get implemented uh, but for now we've got aether vial leading out kind of traditional goblins here lucas on polluted delta not really giving much information as far as what could be coming from the other side of the table Polluted Delta, one of the most played cards in the format. Island. Now Skirk Prospector joins Goblin Crater Maker for kind of a utility creature beatdown. Wasteland adding into the mix. Aether Vial continuing to tick up. Snapcaster on the other side there for Blue White Stone Blade. Goblins is a matchup that you really want to be able to figure out. How to best get use of your or get maximum value of all of your removal. Uh, Mark played in the standard showdown prior to our Wednesday Night Legacy. Uh, Wednesdays at uh, 4 30 when we do have standard showdowns. And then every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we have our Wednesday Night Legacy. Blue White Stone Blade here. Showing some basic lands, indicating perhaps back to basics is going to be in the 75. Flooded Strand also makes it look a lot like Miracles. Oh, we see Umazawa's Jite in hand. And another Goblin Crater Maker. Meaning equipment's going to be a very difficult path forward here. I believe we've got a Swords to Plowshares. Off of a Basic Plains, presumably. And three more damage coming in. Snapcaster Swords, likely the next part of the equation as long as Mark plays a particularly Swords-worthy Goblin. Even if he doesn't, it might just have to happen to get that Umazawa's Jite down. And another Aether Vial, along with a Matron into Ringleader. Ringleader threatens to swing a ton of card advantage back in Mark's direction. So end of turn, Matron, now a ringleader, going to show just the, uh, looks like Gem Palm Incinerator, and now swinging for six, Snapcaster, that's going to get Incinerated, Swordsing, a Crater Maker in all likelihood. Four damage still incoming. Gem Palm Incinerator preventing any type of block for added value. Also prevents Umazawa's Jite from allowing Lucas to claw his way back into the game. Snapcaster holding that equipment can be quite good. It had Jace the Mind Sculptor not at his best against this board. Might draw the attack from Mark, or perhaps Mark just swings at Lucas's head. He'll have a little bit of a decision to make there. We see additional Ace the Mind Sculptors in hand. That could really delay this game if Mark decides to take a detour and start hitting these Planeswalkers. Let's see what he decides. What would you do here? Do you go for the Jace or go for the face? And four damage incoming, like a goblin player. 
ignoring that silly blue planeswalker. The silly abilities. Who cares about brainstorming when you've got little green men everywhere? And Earwig Squad, what are you going to draw into? Let's make sure it's not anything that matters. Earwig Squad is gigantic. A 5-3, the Prowl cost being played, meaning if it resolves, Mark's going to be able to Jester's Cap Lucas, go through his library, choose three cards and exile them. Cards like Terminus most likely, and Lucas actually deciding to call it there rather than give up the additional information. We think about how that game played out. It may be unclear what Lucas is playing to Mark. It might... I don't think he saw anything that indicated Stoneblade over Miracles. Uh, so that is interesting. I'm not sure strategically how much of a difference that makes in terms of Mark's sideboarding, uh, but that is a consideration. With that thought, you know, your opponent can be caught offhand. Uh, for example, Gem Palm Incinerator, all of those might come out if you don't expect your opponent to have any reasonable targets. If it's just going to be Snapcaster Mage, you, you may not care enough to keep those in. Uh, but of course, you'd be very happy to get rid of a Stoneforge Mystic with a Gem Palm Incinerator. So we'll see how Mark kind of read the matchup as he goes into game two. Goblin's picking up a ton of new options for Modern Horizons. We'll see what ends up actually being playable. Uh, Siege Gang Commander does cost 5 mana. The new Sling Gang is 4 mana, allowing you to keep your vials at 4, which is, which is interesting. 4 mana can get out Krenko and your Goblin Ringleaders. Not having to tick it up could end up being beneficial. It also feels pretty bad when you're in a situation where you kind of have to tick up blind in your upkeep before you draw. And basic island for Lucas starting out again. Cavern of Souls casting Aether Vial. A couple of ways for uncounterable goblins here. And starting out with Umazawa's Jite, yes. A lot of players will get Batter Skull against Goblins. I think GTA is almost certainly correct. Does a absolute ton of work. Just killing all of the 1-1s, one -ones, preventing them from going wide. Hmm. Interesting. Pithing Needle is going to be able to stop. Aether Vial, but he's actually going to choose to disenchant it. And just swinging for one. And Mark and Step using Wasteland. I actually disagree with that. There's no, no real benefit to doing it. Then he could just do it on his turn. Uh, Aether Vial coming down off of Rashadenport. Lucas, uh, I missed him drawing a card there. I, I assume he did, and just passed back. Aether Vial ticking up. He's going to look to put in the Umazawa's Jite during the end step, and then equip and start swinging with it. And Goblin Crater Maker. That is a pain. He's got the one mana open. He's going to be able to respond to a Swords to Plowshares from Lucas by killing the Stoneforge Mystic. So Crater Maker is just fantastic right now. A two for one with two high quality cards being taken. A Swords to Plowshares and a Stoneforge Mystic. True name nemesis now comes down. Lucas showing that he's not afraid to block even though True Name only has one toughness. 
those unfamiliar true name nemesis has protection from mark right now when it enters the as it enters the battlefield you choose an uh, choose an opponent and true name has protection from that meaning no creatures or nothing can block it or damage it or target it from mark's side of the board true name can hold down the fort for quite some time He's particularly good at holding equipment. Now, but Crater Maker has really changed the complexion of this type of matchup. Having a expendable goblin that can be thrown at equipment is very, very solid. And Pithing Needle now. Let's see what he goes with. I guess we will not know. We'll have to... Uh, Get something made up so they can write that down for all you viewers at home here. And Gem Palm Incinerator is in the matchup, or is in the deck. Let's check and see if Gem Palm is a May. I believe it is. Let's see. Yes, you may. All right, so Umazawa's GTA comes down, equips, swings, and True Name threatening to close things out in just two swings here, barring a Goblin Crater Maker, one of the only cards that will actually get rid of that GTA because there's not likely to be a way of getting rid of the True Name. Don't believe he's playing Warren's Weirding. And this is just a straight up race situation. Which side of the board can come up with lethal damage sooner? Right now it's looking like Stone Blade, but whoa, this could be different. Goblin Warchief, that adds a bunch of damage. Matron down. With just Warchief, no pile drivers to go along with it, so not a ton of damage done there. Snapcaster in response to port and swordsing, swinging, gaining two more counters. Those counters can be cashed in for extra damage or just killing creatures and mark now with a much clearer picture of what's going on is going to be going into game three. Prepared for equipment. Let's see if he reaches for his sideboard or if he's happy with his decisions. He's not fully aware of the uh, true name nemesis or the equipment. Album Creator Maker. The stock has gone up significantly. Knowing that there's going to be so many high value targets. Yeah, True Name's not nearly as threatening when he's not carrying equipment. The new Siege Gang replacement, I believe it's called Sling Gang Commander, uh, the life gain from that, very, very relevant, especially when True Name's not carrying any equipment. Three, light, three damage per turn, not nearly as scary a clock, uh, and can potentially be totally managed. Uh, even from very low life totals with uh, a card like Krenko, uh, just generating goblins. Of course, the uh, life gain incidental uh, in most matchups, uh, but there are, there are a handful where it'll be quite solid. Very excited to see how that card shakes out along with the other new printings. Badlands and Rashad in port. Mark going after Lucas's mana base here early. No Aether Vial, no Goblin Lackey. Not an ideal start. Cavern of Souls into Warchief. Swinging for three, looking to speed things up a bit. 
perhaps be able to oh that's the new art for back to basics oh man oh and mark's entire mana base is non-basic you got a, a mountain and a crater maker there's four so he's still coming in but that is just a haymaker shot there from lucas back to basics shutting off three of mark's four lands Warchief making his spells cost a little less, uh, but no longer as Swords of Plowshares clears those out, and now a True Name Nemesis is added to the board. And this has gone from bad to worse here for Mark. A Stoneblade still not totally in the clear. They would lose a straight up race as it currently stands, but Lucas has a full mana base to continue adding to the board, and that is. That is brutal. Umazawa's Jite. Kind of an interesting choice right now. I might have got Batter Skull here. That Crater Maker can handle the Jite. Unless Lucas already has the removal for it. Here's a Matron. Mark drawing into some mountains. Batter Skull could come down off of the Stoneforge Mystic and then be bounced in response to the Crater Maker's activated ability. And once True Name Nemesis is holding a Batter Skull, it's very over. I mean, you're swinging for seven, gaining seven. That is just brutal. And I'm not sure what that one is. Let me know in the comments. It might be Goblin Trash Master. Uh, here's Jite. Equip and send. Crater Maker has been cleared off, and this Jite is ready to do its work. Getting two counters on it. Snapcaster trading with Matron. Uh, but this is just uh, two or three turns left here for Mark. Can he get back into this game? Four mana. Trash Master. Sacrificing himself. Jace the Mind Sculptor. And everything's going great for Lucas now. Warchief. Sending. Going to need one hell of a crack back here. Of course, Goblin Pile Drivers uh, can. They can do a lot of work. There's the Batter Skull. Pile Driver's Pro Blue often allows it to work somewhat like a true name nemesis, making it unblockable and uh, very difficult to target. Here's Matron. Knowing that Batter Skull's in hand is a very difficult situation for Mark. Batter Skull's going to be able to come down and get passed off. And a land drop would actually allow it to uh, equip and have the three mana to return. So Mark's, Mark's just dropping Pile Driver here. And sending. Here's the Batter Skull. I think you just block the siege, yeah, the uh, war chief with the batter skull, and the uh, matron with the stone forge take the damage from the pile driver. And he doesn't. I don't. I don't know why he didn't block the matron.
uh, batter skulls. Now some serious life gain coming in. Oh, before that, going to brainstorm with Jace. And now nine or eight damage. Keeping one back. Pyroblast on back to basics. That gets forced. Mark with just too few cards in hand, even with his full mana base. It'd be very difficult to imagine him getting out of this. And there he goes, swinging into True Name, allowing him to kill one more goblin. And uh, that, is, that is what he does when he's holding equipment. He dominates boards. And uh, Lucas takes it down in three.